Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. A couple of weeks ago, you might have spotted my review of the ASUS ROG Swift PG27UQ, the first monitor on the market to sport a 4K resolution up to 144Hz with full display HDR1000 certification and of course, G-Sync HDR. It's a very impressive monitor, certainly one of, if not the best you can get, though I didn't exactly give it a full recommendation due to its $2,000 price tag and a few early adopter issues. Well, the PG27UQ isn't the only such monitor on the market. ASUS has some competition in the form of the Acer Predator X27, which I'm looking at today. Both the PG27UQ and X27 use the same AU Optronics panel, so they're both equipped with the same specifications. But that doesn't mean they perform the same, as I'll discuss a bit later. In fact, I guess the whole point of this video is to determine whether the ASUS or Acer model is the better buy, considering both command the same price tag. In terms of design, it's an easy win to Acer here. The Predator X27 is simply a far more attractive and well-built product compared to the PG27UQ, certainly more fitting of its monstrous price tag. The front of the display itself isn't all that different to the ASUS model with a similar bezel size and similar simple design but it's the stand where the X27 starts to differentiate itself with a much more elegant and less overtly gamer design. Up until the pillar, the stand uses a unique and entirely metal construction befitting of a premium display without ridiculous light projection features or colored highlights. The chunky pillar on the rear, which provides height and swivel adjust along with the usual tilt support, does ruin the elegant design a little bit. However, you can't see it from the front, which is good news. The rest of the rear looks reasonable, though it does fall a bit into the gamer category. However, it's not nearly as bad as ASUS's ridiculous tech pattern on the PG27UQ, so in comparison, the X27 is basically the most beautiful monitor ever created. Uh, the X27 does use plastic everywhere, but the legs featuring two different finishes on the rear, and it does still feel a little cheap. The monitor is also a bit of a chunky beast, though I suspect that's mostly due to the FALD backlight. There are also two RGB LED strips integrated into the design, one in the V-shaped vent towards the top and the other along the bottom edge. Edge. Certainly a cleaner way to integrate RGB than simply chucking it into a massive logo on the rear, though personally I'd still disable it all. The inputs you're getting no different to other G-Sync monitors, a single display port and single HDMI port, plus an audio jack and USB 3.0 hub with a couple of handy quick access ports on the left side. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle, which is great to see, and navigating Ace's feature pack menus easy and fast. Most of the settings you'll find here relate to color and backlight like controls, but there are still favorites like, you know, your cheat crosshairs, dark boost options, though there is no ultra low motion blur. The other thing you'll be interested in, I'm sure, is the active cooling fan. I criticized the ASUS PG27UQ for having an audible cooling fan for the G-Sync HDR module. And I'm sorry to say the Acer Predator X27 also requires a fan to cool the internals. However, Acer uses a noticeably different controller for its fan, which allows it to vary the fan speed. The ASUS version of this monitor runs the fan at the same speed all the time, while the Acer model ramps up the fan slowly from idle, which is a more pleasant and gentle way to introduce the noise the monitor creates. The X27 also appears quieter in its SDR mode while running HDR content fires up the fan to around the same level of noise as the PG27UQ. That said, the fan is still audible during SDR operation, which can be a bit annoying depending on the ambient noise in your room. Ideally, this sort of monitor wouldn't require a fan, and if it did, the fan would be larger, slower, and near silent. But as I mentioned in the PG27UQ review, this is one of those issues that comes about with early adopter products. Moving into performance, and we'll start with HDR features because it's the key feature of the Predator X27. Nothing here is really all that different to the PG27UQ, so if you're interested in a more detailed set of thoughts on how this monitor fares in terms of HDR, I'd suggest going back and watching the HDR section of that review, but I will summarize, I guess, the key points here. The Predator X27 ticks basically every box in my HDR monitor checklist, including great brightness support of 600 nits sustained and over 1000 nits peak. Brightness accuracy is decent, so when content requests say 700 nits be displayed, the X27 gets pretty close to that mark with its default settings. I also achieved around 1100 nits maximum from a 10% window or smaller, which is certainly very good. Contrast is excellent thanks to a full array local dimming backlight with 384 zones. It's very fast and produces no visible afterglow, even after bright objects disappear from view. Each zone is small enough that you won't notice glow around the edges of bright objects in typical movies or games, it's only in desktop usage that you might run into those artifacts. 
With local dimming enabled, the contrast ratio is as high as 52,000 to one, though that varies depending on the brightness of the content, of course. Maximum sustained contrast ratio is around 30,600 to one in the HDR mode, with black levels significantly lower than any other LCD monitor without local dimming. Acer provides several backlight speeds, but for most users, I'd recommend leaving it on the default gaming mode, which is the fastest. As for wide gamut support, again, the X27 ticks all the right boxes here. It provides 93% DCI-P3 coverage, 99% Adobe RGB coverage, and 150% sRGB coverage. The panel is 8-bit plus FRC, not that you'd be able to notice the difference compared to a true 10-bit panel in almost every situation, but of course it supports 10-bit color processing. All of this means you're getting a much wider array of colors in the HDR mode. Again, as far as monitors go, the X27 provides the best HDR experience you can get right now, and games that support HDR well really do look significantly better in the HDR mode on this monitor, with brighter highlights, a wider range of colors, and spectacular contrast. In fact, this snippet from my PG27UQ review sums it up pretty well. In games like Far Cry 5 that support HDR really well, you're not only getting a more vibrant image as the panel can actually display more colors, but there's so much more detail visible, particularly in high contrast scenes. Take an outdoor sunny scene with heavy shadowing. This monitor has the ability to dazzle you with the sun burning in a thousand nits, while simultaneously providing plenty of visible detail in a dark shadowy area. Neither of these elements are blown out because the monitor's dynamic range far exceeds a regular SDR display, and it more closely simulates how the scene would look in real life. So yeah, HDR on the Acer Predator X27 is a lot better than any boring old regular SDR display. Whether that's worth $2,000 is another question which I'll touch on at the end. Of course, like with the PG27UQ, there is the issue of refresh rate and chroma subsampling. Again, I go into a lot more detail in my PG27UQ video, but the basic issue boils down to display port bandwidth. There's simply not enough for HDR or SDR content at 4K 144Hz. Instead, full 444 RGB is only possible at 4K 120Hz in the SDR mode and 4K 98Hz in the HDR mode. If you want to run at higher than those refresh rates, such as the monitor's maximum 144Hz refresh rate, you'll have to put up with 422 chroma subsampling, which reduces the chroma resolution and can introduce artifacts in some situations. Chroma subsampling, in my opinion, it's extremely hard to spot in video content and in games, but it is noticeable in desktop apps with artifacts around solid edges and text. I'd still class the issue as minor, but it's disappointing DisplayPort is limiting these displays from reaching their full potential. Hopefully that's resolved with future tech. I'd advise people using the display in a desktop SDR mode to cap the monitor to 120 or even 98 hertz, and for HDR gaming, run at 98 hertz unless you have powerful enough hardware to exceed 100 FPS at 4K. Let's move into looking at SDR performance, because here there are a few differences between the Acer and ASUS models. In terms of brightness and contrast ratio, everything is still quite similar though. The X27 goes up to a maximum of 317 nits in the SDR mode, with a native contrast ratio around 1100 to 1. That said, I'd still recommend leaving the dynamic backlight enabled for most SDR content, in which case you'll achieve a contrast ratio around 10,000 to 1 at 200 nits, though of course, that varies with the brightness level you set the monitor to. Black levels are outstanding for an LCD with the dynamic backlight enabled as well. Response time is one area where the X27 differs compared to the PG27UQ. Each company has the ability to tweak their overdrive controls despite using the same panel, and in the case of the Acer and ASUS models, Acer's overdrive controls, I guess, are a little lacking. Our standard test procedure involves finding the best overdrive setting that delivers less than a 5% overshoot, and then using that setting for response time testing. In the case of the ASUS monitor, that was the normal mode, which produced an average gray to gray response time of 4.18 milliseconds with no overshoot whatsoever. However, with the Acer X27, their normal overdrive mode, one of two modes, the other being extreme, is a bit more aggressive. It produces a quicker response time, but some transitions had upwards of 10% overshoot, which is beyond our tolerances. So for the X27, the best setting to use is actually overdrive disabled, a disappointing result as it's the only mode where overshoot is not present. In this mode, average grade to grade response times are 6.62 milliseconds, a few milliseconds slower than the ASUS model, and that's with the dynamic backlight enabled, which was also the setting used for testing the PG27UQ. 4.2 to 6.6 .6 milliseconds is a noticeable jump in response time, which leaves the X27 with more ghosting and smearing compared to the PG27UQ. I reckon Acer could have tweaked their overdrive algorithm to deliver performance much closer to the PG27UQ, 
but they didn't. That said, this result is still a lot better than popular VA panels, and the average transition time is still lower than the refresh window of 6.94 milliseconds. In better news, the Acer Predator X27 exhibits superior input latency, falling from 15.6 milliseconds to 11.4 milliseconds. This means that overall, when you factor in the input lag and pixel response time, the X27 is actually slightly faster than the PG27UQ. I was expecting to see the same input latency for both monitors, so it's a nice surprise that the X27 is faster. Looking at color performance, Acer factory calibrates all Predator X27 units to a Delta E accuracy less than 1.0 for SDR content, which is an extremely tight professional grade certification. Bizarrely though, they don't advertise this on their website anywhere or on their Amazon product page, despite including a color accuracy sticker on the monitor itself, along with a calibration report in the box. Considering Acer calibrates the X27 to a greater level of accuracy than the PG27UQ, ASUS only promises a Delta E below 3.0, you'd think Acer would like to advertise this fact. And default color performance is certainly very impressive. The CCT curve isn't quite as tight as you get from full calibration, but a Delta E average of 0.76 is excellent, as is the near-perfect gamma curve. This performance continues in the saturation and color checker tests, both of which exhibit delta E averages near 0.5, which is absolutely elite for a gaming monitor. You'd be very happy with this level of factory performance from a professional monitor, although I guess for $2,000 you really should be getting full calibration like this. And the important thing to note is the X27 is more accurate out of the box than the PG27UQ. The ASUS model is still quite good with Delta E averages around 1.3 to 1.5, but the X27 takes things one step further. And with a few very minor tweaks to colors in the on-screen display, the X27 produces the best color results I've seen yet with an average Delta E of just 0.36 in grayscale, a perfect CCT curve, and a perfect saturation Delta E of just 0.29. This increases the gap between the Acer and ASUS models as the ASUS model doesn't change significantly with OSD tweaks. This level of performance from a few OSD tweaks is better than I could achieve with a full calibration pass in Calman 5 in a software profile, so there isn't any reason to run a full calibration. There's really no way to describe this level of color performance other than to say it's perfect. To make matters even better, the Predator X27 exhibits fantastic uniformity. At a maximum delta E of 2.5 in the upper right corner and delta E's at or below 2.0 for the rest of the monitor, the X27 delivers professional grade uniformity. It will be very difficult for any typical user to spot unevenness in this panel. I'm not sure whether it's natural variance in panels or whether Acer are specifically requesting the more uniform panels that come out of the factory, but the X27 is noticeably more uniform than the PG27UQ, which was a bit uneven along the top and bottom edges. I can only go on what I test, and in this case, the X27 is the better option. So when it comes to the conclusion of this review, I wanted to answer one question first. Is the Acer Predator X27 or the ASUS ROG Swift PG27UQ the better of the two G-Sync HDR monitors? Well, in my testing, it's pretty much a slam dunk victory to the Acer model. Both panels have equivalent HDR performance, but it's the Acer model that comes with better factory calibration and a more uniform panel, delivering a professional grade experience that the ASUS variant doesn't quite reach. When you're spending $2,000, you really should be getting professional level accuracy, and of the two variants, only the Acer model is truly providing that out of the box. The Acer model is slightly slower in terms of response times, but it's faster in terms of input lag, creating a fairly even battle there overall. And I also think the X27 has a much nicer design, even if it still requires an active cooling fan. Then the question becomes, should you spend $2,000 on the Acer Predator X27 at all? And that's the trickier one to answer, but I think what I said in my review of the PG27UQ also applies here. The X27 is no doubt a very impressive piece of hardware with excellent performance and great HDR support, but the $2,000 price is still ludicrous when you can get a great 1440p 144Hz G-Sync monitor for about 500 bucks. It won't be as high resolution and won't provide HDR, but I don't think the bump to 4K HDR is worth $1,500. I also think there are a few too many early adopter issues like the active cooling fan, the expensive G-Sync HDR module, and chroma subsampling. The panel does work well, but I think a lot of these issues will be ironed out in a potentially more affordable next-gen product. And let's be honest, 
The issues are compounded by a lack of decent HDR games. You're not only spending a lot of money to get HDR today, but you're also limited to a small handful of titles that make the most of this monitor's top end features. With any sort of technology, you can always fall into the trap of saying to wait for the next greatest thing. But in the case of this HDR monitor, by the time there is a larger range of decent HDR games to play, it's likely this panel will be replaced by a cheaper, better version. And it's at that point I'd recommend jumping into the world of high end HDR gaming, whereas today I think it's still a bit too early to be investing $2,000. Like with the PG27UQ, I don't think X27 buyers will at all be disappointed as it's a great flagship display with excellent technology inside, but personally I'd be waiting until the ecosystem is a bit more mature and there are a few more HDR monitors on the market to choose from. That's it for this review of the Acer Predator X27. Links to check its current price are in the description, hopefully in a few months if you're watching it. A few months after this video went live, it'll have dropped in price a bit. Consider supporting us on Patreon so we can continue to create these monitor reviews and to get access to our fun Discord chat. And I'll catch you next time.